Hello and welcome to the 39th video in this series for beginners programming C. So this video we're going to start taking a first look at a really great part of the C language and that is data structures. You've got a little program here that I've set up and you can understand hopefully straight away what it does. I've declared speed people in a name, I've set name to focus, speed to 10, people to 5, it's a car, printing the car to the screen and it prints the name uh, speed and the people just as so in the terminal here as in the terminal here all well and good let's say that you had a program where the user could enter up to 10 cars and you want to store these 10 cars so you would have some kind of inside the main function here some kind of while loop and then would you be using the f gets to get in the input from the user asking for the name speed and number of people and you would want to store these. Well, the first way maybe that comes to mind to do this with what we've learned so far in the series is say, okay, if I've got 10 cars, I need speed one, speed one, speed one, and then for the next car two, and right up to nine, So that because we've got obviously the without a number here. And we're already maintaining there 30 variables for our cars and then if the user says I want to print car 5 to the screen then you'll need to do an if else and then say if they've said 5 then we need to grab the variable speed for people for name for etc etc and you can imagine that it quickly becomes unmanageable with lots of variables floating about so you might think well okay there's a better way of doing this actually and a better way of doing this is simply to say if we have our speed we'll make an array of 10 we'll do the same for people and the same for name and then we can simply index the array to get the value and when they enter the fifth, ca fifth car we store at index uh, 4 and so on because it's zero indexed very good and then when we come to print then we will just change this and print in our example with index 4 index 4 etc no problem at all but say then we wanted to add another feature into our car so we wanted to add seats or something like this then we would have to change our print car definition so we would end up adding int seats and then everywhere inside our program where we had called print car we would also need to add seats with the array index on as well like this in every single place we'd called the print function. So you can imagine if we were printing a car at say 50 different locations in our program then it starts to become a maintenance issue every time you want to add something, some data say to your car, a different kind of data and it starts to become problematic as you can now probably imagine. But there is a much better way of doing it and that better way of doing it is using something called data structures. So I'm going to delete this off, delete this off delete this out of print car and delete this and delete this so now what we're going to do is use structures to hold our car object and the way we do it is we type struct and then we give the structure a name and I've called it s underscore car for structure you don't have to, you can give it any name you like as long as it's not one of the keywords in C so long, int, void, struct or something like this and now inside this structure I'm going to give it the name and then a semicolon and then I'm going to say it has its people as an int and it has its speed as an int and now to declare a car all we need to do down inside main is say struct and s car and we'll call it car1 and equals and now we can set the values of the car in this way so we can say that it's a focus that it has five people and speed 10 and now we come to print the car exactly as with normal variables we have our type which is of struct s car and then the name which we'll just call our car and then we need to access the information inside the structure of our car and the way we do that is very simple. We use something called the dot operator. So we will say our car dot and then we'll simply say name. And then our car dot people 
and our car oops car dot and speed and that's all we need to do to have exactly the same as we had before but with already a lot less code typed and in a minute when I show you far more convenient code so I'll just compile this and check that it compiles because when you start doing things like this the, the chances of making errors are great and I've not put inside print car the actual car one structure so I'll put that here and save and go back and compile and now run and here you can see we're now printing our car to the screen so to add a second car now becomes actually very very simple compared with what we were talking about before we can now just call this car car 2 Cayman let's give it two people and a speed of 50 and then we just need to call print car on car 2 in this way and if I compile and run this program I'm sure you can already imagine what's happening and now we have both cars printed out to the terminal and now if you want to add the seats in things become a huge amount easier than they were before so we simply need to add seats in in this way and now let's give the Focus 5 seats and the Cayman 4 seats in this way print car doesn't change the call to print car and this is what's much more convenient doesn't change at all it's exactly the same call and we simply need to add on the end inside the function here seats and we'll also have the printout for the number of seats here like this so for now compile and run this program we should get something printing out the seats as well and now we've got the seats 5 and the seats 4 and this should give you already an indicator of how much better it is to work with data structures because as I said if we'd had this print car statement dotted all around the program in 50 different places we'd have had to change it if we weren't using a data structure as it is we didn't have to do anything with the code here we just changed the print car function itself so that's it for this video that's the first introduction to data structures and the next video will carry on looking in a bit more detail so thanks very much for watching comments questions criticisms welcome as always on YouTube